but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along that put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied I'm not afraid
today that you know the, one of the most significant things you can do as you fight spiritual battles is worship. You know, the, the Bible says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, we fight against spirits and principalities. These are not weapons that are carnal, they're spiritual. And I'm telling you this morning that some of you might be in this place and you're trying to engage with worship and something's holding you back. The enemy would never want you to engage in worship. You know why? Because he carries, check this out, I'm not gonna go off too, too long in this, but he carries a fraudulent spirit. And he wants you to walk in a fraudulent spirit. So he wants you to think that you're not worthy to come into worship. But let me tell you this, Jesus made a way. Jesus made a way. It's not, the enemy would say that you have no right here to worship. Jesus says you have every right to worship. Jesus made a way. So I want you to lift your hands in this place this morning. And I want you to defeat that fraudulent spirit. I want you to wage war this morning because you're fighting for something. On this day of liberty, take ownership this morning. Take ownership of what's yours. Jesus paid a price so that you can access heaven. You can access the throne room of heaven. You can go after all of God, all that God has for you. God's not holding back anything. So let's worship this morning. Jesus. We're ready for a chance to come. We're ready for you. for anybody that just needs to know that they're seen, that you see them here this morning, that they're not overlooked, they're not unnoticed, but they're seen, that you have a plan and a purpose for their life, that you have big dreams for them. God, I pray this morning that there would be something that awakens on the inside of every one of us that know that you have a plan, that you have a purpose, that we're not here on accident, we're not a mistake. You meant for us to be here. You meant for us to be in the presence of Jesus. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would access and make yourself available in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, church, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Come on, come on, a little bit louder. Well, man, it's good to see you all. You look great. Happy 4th of July. I told the team I was going to bring some sparklers up here today, but we, we had to do that, cancel that because I want to light anything on fire up here. But it's good to see you all this morning. Why don't you go and take a seat? Man, it's good to be together with every one of you all. We want to welcome a couple of groups of people here this morning. Can we give it up for two groups of people, everyone that's new and everybody that's watching online? Can we give a round of applause for everyone? Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new, we would love to engage with you. We have a party that we do about every six weeks called our welcome party. Yeah, it's, come on now. People are getting excited. But I want you to text the word new to 720-704-0027. That way you can just um, let us know you'd like to come, we'd like to connect with you, and then we send you a little video letting you know about the welcome party that'll be happening in a few weeks from now. Well, just a couple of things as we get um, ready for the message here this morning. I've got a couple of quick announcements, and then we've got a video thing for you behind me. Um, young adults, where are my young adults at in the place? Young adults, 18, 35 years old, yeah, nice. 
We've got our next young adult kind of pre-launch service. We're relaunching young adults on August 20th, but we're gonna do a worship and prayer night. We're calling it a flow night on July 16th, 7.30, uh, right here at the building. It'll be July 16th, it's a Friday night. We'd love for you to come, just be in the atmosphere of Jesus. A bunch of young people, I'm sure people go get food and hang out afterwards, but 7.30, young adults, on July 16th, a prayer and worship night, we call those flow nights. And then secondly, um, we've got, we're hosting a concert in a couple of months. Uh, we, we were asked to, to host uh, a neat opportunity for us. Uh, Pat Barrett, he's a, I think a K-Love artist and he performs all over the world, but he's gonna be here on September the 26th. But just wanna let you know that there's tickets available at the Next Steps counter uh, this Sunday. You can, you can purchase those and you can let friends know, but that'll be happening on September the 26th, so a couple months from now. But we're gonna be hosting that concert here in this facility. Um, all that being said, I've got some church news for you, so I want you to turn your attention to the screen behind me. Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Doug, and if Donna and I have not met you yet, welcome to the Pearl Church. We are so honored and so blessed that you chose to spend your Sunday with us, all right? Now, my family and I, we're on vacation right now. Today's the first day of our vacation, uh, and we're gonna get some rest, and we're gonna come back excited you know, about what God's doing because God's doing so many things right now in the church. We have an incredible fall and summer and fall. It's going to be amazing. September 19th, we actually have our 10 year anniversary and it's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. I just want to throw that out there so that you can all mark your calendars for September 19th. Don't forget that date. We've got special guests. It's going to be a big party. We're going to have an amazing time on September 19th. 10 year anniversary, it's actually 11, but we lost a year, there was something happened last year. Um, but for the next three weeks, we have a short series called The Work. It has to do with the finished work of Jesus and what Jesus has done in us and what he's doing in us and what he's already done it has to do with our testimony. And you're gonna get to hear from uh, three of our pastoral team, uh, Pastor Elliot Sawyer next week, Pastor Malia Sawyer the week after that, and then this morning. So it's gonna be a great three weeks. You don't wanna miss it. We have a house full of preachers and uh, it's gonna be good. Today, I just wanna introduce our speaker to you. Uh, you know her, she is our operations pastor um, and she's gonna bring the word. She always brings a great word. She's anointed. And so I love you all so much. Dawn and I, are, we miss you. We're gonna be watching online and praying for you in the middle of eating lots of food, uh, breaking my keto diet, uh, sleeping in. I might even watch service uh, from bed with a latte uh, like like I was doing last year. But can you do me a favor today? Can you please right now put your hands together and clap for Pastor Tasha Garza as she brings the word this morning. Come on, give her a big round of applause. God bless you and we'll be back real soon. Well, good morning, Pearl Church. Okay, okay, okay. Well, if, if you shout that loud for Pastor Tasha, can I hear you give it up for Jesus this morning? No, no, see, I, I want you to stand up on your feet this morning. I'm gonna have you shake it up a little bit because I believe that God is on the move here in the Pearl Church, here in your life. So even up on the balcony, I want you to stand up on your feet and I just want you to give a clap offering to Jesus in this place. Come on. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Can I just say I am so honored and truly grateful to be the one uh, that is bringing the word this morning to you. Uh, first, before um, I jump in, I just want to say happy 4th of July. I know that this day represents a lot of different things for people, but how many of you know that we can agree that we have hope for our future? Under the unity of the Holy Spirit and what God wants to do in our country, I have hope. Who's with me? You know what then we're going to do this morning before I jump into the word is I want to pray for us. Because even as we jump into a particular portion of scripture this morning, I couldn't help but just be overwhelmed by the concept of unity. And so if you just wouldn't mind praying with me for our country right now, Jesus, we just thank you, God. God, we thank you for who you are. Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. And God, right now, I thank you for the country that we live in, God. God, I know that this day will represent a lot of different things for people, but what I pray shouts the loudest, God, is what you have done for us, Jesus. That this is a day that represents freedom, that this is a day that represents liberty, that this is a day that represents hope. And so God, I pray, Jesus, right now, that you would unify your church in this season. That God, what you 
you've called us to do in this next season requires unity. So just even as last week as Pastor Doug asked us to put aside our differences of politics and religion and different things that we fall off, we, we truly, God, fall on our knees, God, humbly asking that you would unify us under the banner of your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, it actually looks like we shot off some fireworks in here, so I'm, a, I'm like a fan of that. The 4th of July is actually my favorite holiday because we get to get together with our family, we barbecue, we do the lake, right mom and dad? It's pretty awesome, I love it. So today, as Pastor Doug mentioned, we are going to get started on a brand new series called The Work. And the whole tagline of what Pastor Doug has presented to us is that it is this, God is doing a good work in me. I'm going to say that one more time. God is doing a good work in me. Amen. How many of you believe that this morning? And even for those of you who didn't clap because you don't believe it, that's okay this morning. I want you to know that. That even if you're like, you know what, Pastor Tasha, you asked me that. And I'm, if I'm sitting with you at coffee at Aviano's and we're talking about do I really believe that, I'm going to be honest with you this morning and I'm not sure if I do. Well, my, my prayer is today is that we walk out of here knowing that God truly is doing something good in your life. So right now, I just want you to just take a moment to have a moment with the Holy Spirit that as we journey through this word together, my hope and my prayer is that you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. See, we could, we could leave on this one point, you know what, you can journal that question and you could be like, you know what, I'm checking out for the rest of the time and I'm like, you know what, that's okay because you can go and listen to it later, that's why we have messages on demand and you don't want to miss this, but if the Holy Spirit's like, hey, camp out here, you have permission to do it. Because what really matters at the end of the day is not what I have to say, but what matters is what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you this morning. And so what I'm asking you to do is I want you to pull out your phone. I want you to pull out your notebook. If you're old school like me who has a notebook that just writes with pen, you know, back in the day, that's what people used to do. <laughs> and the reason why I'm asking you and encouraging you to do that this morning is because I believe it shows your anticipation and expectation that God's gonna speak. So pull out your phone, pull out your notebook, and I want you to position your heart this morning to hear from God. You see, when I, again, when I ask that question, do you believe God is doing a good work in you? As I look across this room, I can say with confidence that I believe that he is. As I look into this camera, and I know some of my friends that aren't here that they're watching online, I can say with confidence that God is doing a good work in you. Our team believes it, and most importantly, God knows he's doing it. And so that's what we're going to do these next three weeks is I'm really excited. I get to, we get to hear from two of my favorite, favorite preachers, Pastors Elliot and Malia Sawyer down here. And so what I, but what I'm going to encourage you to do this morning, church, is I want you to lean in today as we focus on unpacking the work that God is doing in our lives. You see, when I even asked Pastor Doug, I was like, what was the inspiration and what drew you to this? And you know what he said? He wants people to go personal. So I'm believing that as we start this series that God is going to do a very personal work in you. How many of you are ready for it? Yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you open up your Bibles or your phones. And we're going to turn to the book or flip or scroll to the book of Philippians. And we are going to start. We're really going to focus and we're going to camp out on the scripture, Philippians 1, 6. And it says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out onto completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I'm going to read this one more time. Being confident of this. I know I mentioned this last week and I got made fun of a little bit, that I like to read the word of God with a little bit of attitude. You have permission to do that, you wanna know why? Because God works through our personalities. He made you specifically, uniquely, designed you so specifically and intentionally. And I know that my parents can vouch for this. I walk out around with a little bit of attitude. Amen. <laughs> 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 
But you know, I believe that God can redeem that. So hey, parent that has a teenager that has a little bit of attitude, it's okay because one day God's gonna redeem that, he's gonna touch it, and he's gonna use it for his glory, amen? amen. <laughs> so here's what I just wanna say. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ. And so I'm gonna just plagiarize Paul's words here and the title of, title of my message is being confident of this. All right, join with me in prayer right here, church, and we'll jump in. God, we just thank you for this time. God, we thank you that your presence is here. God, we thank you that your word says that you abide in the praises of your people. And as we praise you this morning, God, we know that you are here. God, and I pray that when your presence is in this place, I ask, God, that you would bring us the spirit of revelation and wisdom. Your word says that when you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we know you better. And so, God, I pray that that's the testimony this morning, that as you reveal things to us, God, that we learn who you are. God, I ask Jesus right now that you would enlighten our hearts to the confidence and hope in which you've called us. God, I ask that you deepen our understanding to the immeasurable power that is at work in us and the access that we have to it. God, I just pray that you move in a powerful way this morning. God, from my lips to their ears. God, I pray that you interpret and you translate a very personal word because I believe you want to strengthen and encourage your children this morning. God, we thank you that you are involved in this today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, before we jump in, I just want to share with you, the, so the whole context of this particular scripture is that Paul is writing it to a group of people in Philippi. And so if, for those of you that know who Apostle Paul is, he wrote majority of the New Testament. And he wrote this particular book or this letter to this church while he was in prison. That itself can preach. I could drop the mic if I had one. Maybe we'll take that somewhere. That Paul wrote a church, he wrote a, a letter to a group of people while he was in prison to encourage them. This group of people, when you get to know them, they're referenced in a lot of different places throughout the portion of, throughout scripture but they were a group of faithful, loyal, and generous believers. They were very, very special to Paul. You see, back in Acts, you know, we just walked out of this incredible, I actually think one of my favorite series we've ever done, Build Your Church. We were in the book of Acts, and in Acts 16, you'll read different scriptures of a woman named Lydia, who was the very first convert in, that Paul had in Europe, that they launched a church out of this vision that he had of uh, a vision of the Macedonian man. It's pretty cool. But in that, what you see is that God began to do an incredible work in a group of people that stayed loyal to Paul. You see, he established this church by gathering together a group of women, and then it, the gospel spread, and it took over. This is also, if you're familiar with this, have you, has, have, has anybody ever heard of the story when Paul and Silas, they begin to proclaim the gospel, they cast out demons, they get arrested, they're beaten, but they praise God in prison and a miracle happens. If you've heard of that, this is that city. This is that church. And I just think it's important for us to know that when Paul is writing this group of people, he dearly loves them. And you see, the purpose of this whole entire book is that God is moving through the church in Philippi. The gospel's being proclaimed, lives are being transformed. Sound familiar? The gospel is being proclaimed, lives are being transformed, miracles are happening. Come on, church, that's actually happening today. That our God is the God that says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when I read things like this that took place in the Bible times, you know what I ask for? God, may that happen today. May it happen today. And you know what? It is happening. And that's why when I even began to pray for myself and you that our eyes would be, the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened, that we may see what God is doing. And that's why I believe even prophetically that this, this portion of scripture, yes, it's to minister to us where we currently are right now, but it's to set the tone so that when we walk into this next season, 
we have confidence in what God is doing in our lives. You see, the gospel is being proclaimed in Philippi, lives are being transformed, and yet the church is experiencing suffering and hardship because of it. And this letter was written to show appreciation and encourage progress to the believers in Philippi. And I believe, just like I said, just like the Philippian church, the gospel is being proclaimed, lives are being transformed, miracles are taking place. And so I believe that God this morning, he wants to encourage us in this season and set the tone for the next to come. I believe this morning that God wants to impart confidence in us about the work that he is doing in us. The whole word of confidence means that you are fully convinced, that you are fully persuaded that God is doing something in your life. And so what I wanna do for the next few minutes this morning while we have our, our time together is I wanna highlight a few principles in scripture that shape our perspective about the work that God is doing in our lives. So if you have your notebook, you have your phone ready, point number one is the work is good. See, Paul, when he writes this, he doesn't just say, being confident of this, he who began a work. It says he began a good work. You see, and I want to drop this thought with you, that when the work originates with God and it is empowered by God, it is good. It's because God's character is good. And he can't do anything outside of his character. So because he is good, he only does good. Now this doesn't mean, my friends, that the work will always feel good. But you see, as I was reading and I was imagining that I'm sitting in a prison with Paul and he's writing out this letter to a group of people that he loves so dearly, what I believe what he was communicating is this, that as we begin to mature as believers and we begin to understand who God is, that at some point, pretty quickly in your, in your walk with God, and quite often, we have to recognize that our faith in God's character has to triumph over our feelings of our circumstance. And I know that that's not easy. And so I, want, I never want someone to think that, you know, when we're standing up here and we're preaching this, we're like, hey, <laughs> faith over feelings, that I'm not a human myself, that has to walk this out. And so I say this with compassion, but I say this with passion to you, that I want you as you begin to walk out your Christianity and walk out your life that at some point, there's gonna be something inside of you that says, God, my faith in your character must triumph over my feelings and my circumstance. And see, it even says this in John 3.20, 1 John 3.20, I thought this was so awesome that there's so many different things that we can go to for the Bible, go to in the Bible. And it says this, even if we feel guilty, that's the emotion that they're addressing in this particular portion of scripture. God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. So this is not a cliche statement that faith needs to triumph over feelings. It's actually something that God is communicating to us through his word. God is greater than our feelings. And so what I want to do is just share this with you and implore you and encourage you that when you find yourself in that season where you have to apply your faith over your feelings, that if you ask the Holy Spirit right now to come and help you do that, he calls himself your helper. When we're up here, I'm not asking, we're not asking people to apply through striving in our flesh. What we're asking you to do is to engage with the Holy Spirit who empowers you from the inside out to be able to walk through what he's asking you to walk through and do what he's asking you to do. 
and I can prove it. It's my third point, but I don't want to miss the second point because the second point's awesome. But that God really does will and work through us. And so one thing I want to highlight to a few people in the room too is that faith over feelings doesn't mean we don't have feelings. And it doesn't mean, but it, what it does mean is that they don't control us. Because you know what, if I looked at my Bible and God's like, you can't have feelings, I'm sorry, but the whole book of Psalms wouldn't exist. <laughs> when I read that, I'm like, man, David, you are emotional. Thank God, because I can relate. Like, thank God, God put somebody in the Bible that I'm like, oh, God, I praise you, but can you just like wipe them up? No, I've got to be careful with what I say around here. <laughs> I'm the only one that talks like that with God, I'm sure. No one else. But here's what I'm saying, is that God put a very emotional man in the word for us to best understand how we can apply our faith over our feelings, that we can go to God with them and see faith triumph over our feelings. So I'd encourage you this morning that if you find yourself in a season where your feelings and your emotions are whipping you back and forth, to go to God. He wants to hear all of them, even the bad ones, even the ones that you wouldn't repeat to your friends. He wants to hear from you, and he will help you be led by faith, not by feelings. The second point that I want to highlight from this portion of scripture is the work is started, carried, and completed by God. See, as you read this scripture, I don't know if it's up here, I like to just pull out different words. I asked God, a few of the girls in here know this, that we have led a Bible study with for a few years. I call them Holy Spirit highlights. And as I read the word, I ask God to highlight particular words in the Bible that I go back to. And as I was preparing this message, God highlighted a few things to me for this particular point. And it says, being confident of this, that he who began... So he began, God started, a good work in you will carry it on. He carries it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, he started the work. So guess what, church family? He's going to finish it. See, when it comes to the work in your life, God isn't interested in relay races. How many of you are familiar with track and field? I've been watching the Olympics. There's a lot of different things going on. I used to, back in the day, you know, people talk about the glory days. Well, in middle school, I ran the four by four. <laughs> four by two, actually. I can only run a 200. Forget anything else past that. But what I remember about that is that we each had a leg to run. And we were running different things, and we would pass the baton, and our job would be done, and our teammate would run forward. And I believe that when it comes to the work that we're called to do. But let me tell you that God, for you and your life, he ain't interested in relay races. Because he wants to finish it. He's that determined. He doesn't want anybody else to touch it. Because you are his prized possession. You are his masterpiece, and he wants to take all the credit for you, baby. It's all him. So he doesn't pass the baton, and I believe that's a word for somebody in this place. God hasn't passed it, and he hasn't dropped it. He hasn't passed on you. He hasn't dropped you because he is so committed to you. He started it, he's going to carry it, and he's going to finish it. And I believe this morning what God wants to do is stir up a faith and a confidence inside of us that would arise for us to say what we talked about. Even though, God, I feel this way, I am confident of this, that he who began a good work in me will carry it to completion until Christ Jesus. You see, if you have a relationship with Jesus, I'm here to tell you the work has begun. The work has begun in you. you and what I love about this is when you have a relationship with God, you live under the covering of his promises. It's a part of your inheritance as a child of God. 
that you live under the covering of the promise that God will complete the work that he started in you. But if any of you are like me, I know that after he, God began to take, do this work, I began to experience this temptation to take control back, to take that baton of my life and to attempt to carry the work myself. Because I'm like, God, I know better, I got this. You ran the first leg, but don't worry, I got this one. I wanted to carry it. There's multiple reasons why we as humans believe that we, we desire to carry it. But do you know that he doesn't ask us to do that? And so what I would pose the question for you this morning, church, is have you done that? Have you begun to say, God, I'm going to carry the work that you want to do inside of me and put it on my shoulders? Have you done that this morning? And again, I'm, I'm saying this, I can ask you that question and I know that it exists because I've done it before. I can actually, I'll just avoid some eye contact with some people in the room <laughs> that have watched me do this, that have said, God, I'm afraid of what you're gonna do, so I'm gonna take it. God, I don't think I'm gonna make it, I'm not strong enough, so let me take it. Or God, you know what, I just don't want to do what you are asking me to do, so let me take it. There are so many reasons why, church, that we take the work that God wants to do inside of us and we want to carry it ourselves. And so I pose the question, if you're doing that and if you've done it, to ask yourself why, and then know that God is asking you today to give it back to him. You see, he doesn't ask us to carry the work that he's doing in us. Instead, he says this, in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, it says, are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. This is what Jesus says. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you will discover that I am gentle, humble, and easy to please. You will, refine, you will find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. You see, church, if we're, as we are understanding the work that God is doing in us, we have to, the, the Paul says that he's the one that carries it on to completion. We have to let him. So I'm going to ask you, let, or I'm going to, encourage you, I can't say tell you, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but maybe, let him carry it. Give it back to him this morning. Shift the weight of the work from your shoulders to his, because he asks us to carry it. The other thing that was highlighted in this scripture is that he started it, he carries it, is that he's, he'll complete it. Do you know that God is a finisher? When I keep thinking about track and field, you see that there's a particular finish line that God has marked out for us. And do you know that he won't stop short for you? I believe that there are some of you in this room that God has given promises that he has spoken to you about you personally, about your calling. He has spoken to you about your family, about your healing. And this word says that he will complete it. He doesn't stop short. And he doesn't give up. You see, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, it says this. The one who calls you by name is trustworthy and will thoroughly complete his work in you. So I want to encourage you this morning, church, to remind you that God will 
complete. He will finish what he started. As I began to read, you know, that scripture, I, I believe that you can go, okay, well, if God is the one that starts it, carries it, and completes it, then I can just chill. But as you continue to read through the book of Philippians, it's really awesome to see that God, what he highlights in verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 6, says, I'm completing a work in you. And then later on, it's what actually became one of my favorite portions of scripture this last year is Philippians 2.13. It says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And so point number three this morning is that the work is in us and involves us. You see, as I read that portion of scripture in Philippians 2.13, it says to will, which you can translate as God will give you the desire. And he works in you to act, which means he will give you the power. But you see, this is not a passive transaction. That the word says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. But the scripture right above that indicates our involvement in what he's working in us. And it says this in Philippians 2.12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, this is Paul speaking, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I love it in the message translation, it says this, continue to live in responsive obedience. It then says be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. So what I want to encourage you this morning with church is to be involved. Obediently respond to God. And as you do, he will give you the desire and the power to fulfill his good purpose. So I ask you this question this morning. How is God asking you to be involved in the work that he's doing in your life? How is he asking you to respond in obedience to? What is he asking you to respond to? And right now in this moment, even as I ask that question, it could become pretty heavy for some of us. Because that thing that God is asking us to re obediently respond to is, I'm scared. It's going to be really hard. Or you know what, my, I just don't want to. But again, the promise of us obediently responding is that we don't have to do it in our own strength. Because the scripture right after that, I want to remind us, says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act, to give you the desire and the power to respond obediently to what he's calling you to do. And so as the worship team comes up this morning, I just want to review a, a few things with you, church. And I, what I want us to do is we're going to spend just some time worshiping this morning as we get ready to, to close and you get to go celebrate the fourth with your family and your friends. I just want to remind you and review these particular points. Because I believe, church, you know, I couldn't help but think as we were going through the last series of Build Your Church, and Pastor Doug walked us through the purity and the simplicity of the local church and what God has called us to be. 
I sat in here and I began to just listen and ask God because the content is so good. But the question that I feel the Holy Spirit put on my heart is, God, what are you preparing us for? That you're reminding us of your truth that we are a church that is Jesus-centered. That the foundation of who we are resides in the gospel message. That we are a church that was birthed out of the supernatural and called to break barriers. What is he doing in us in this season? And so as you just stand to your feet this morning and we, go ahead and stand. I just truly do believe that the Holy Spirit is speaking to some of you today. And I'd like to pray for you. But before we do that, I just, want us to know these three things as we walk into this next season of what God is doing in us right now and what he's about to do through us is that we step in right now with confidence saying number one that the work that God is doing in me is good that the work that God is doing me is started, completed, carried and completed by Him. And that the work that He is doing is in you and it involves you. And so I'm just gonna have the worship team lead us in a song, but I wanna pray for a few groups of people. But if you wouldn't mind just right now, can you stretch your hands up, church, right now? to Jesus and begin right now to posture your heart for the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you because whether you are some, whatever point may have stood out to you or maybe none of them did, but I'm believing that because of where God is taking us, confidence needs to arise inside of us about the work that he is doing in you and in our church this morning. So as you stretch out your hands to heaven, just begin to ask the Holy Spirit to come minister to you, to begin to speak to you, to begin to touch your mind, your soul, your will and your emotions, your spirit this morning and go ahead and sing. Jesus, you're not done with me. You're doing a new thing. You're doing circumstances outside of my control or even just the work that God was doing inside of me that I had to say God I'm confident in this but before I even got there to be able to proclaim my confidence he had to remind me of his commitment and you know that's okay because I was in a place where I'm like God I'm not that confident just circumstances of life, what's going on in my family, God, what you're doing inside of me, I'm not that confident. But you know what I find to be really interesting about this book is that it's not necessarily the, the Philippians that are saying, I am confident. It's Paul that declares his confidence over the church. And so what I'm saying to you this morning, church, is I'm going to declare that I am confident in this that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion.
completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So, but for those of you that find yourself in that place where you said, God, my confidence is shaken, that's okay. You are welcome here. And you know that God actually wants you to bring your shaking confidence to the throne room of heaven for him to impart something inside of you this morning. So just out of respect for people who are going through different things in their life, church, can you bow your heads? And if you find yourself in this position that you say, God, I need you to instill this confidence inside of me because I've been shaken in this last season. I just want you to lift your hand right now. I just want you to stretch your hand out. Thank you, Jesus. You can put it down, I'm gonna pray for you. Jesus, right now, God, in your presence, God, we thank you that we can approach your bowl, your, your, your throne room with boldness. God, you say that we can approach it, your throne room of grace to get what we need from you, God. So right now, God, I come against any sort of lie or mentality that says we can't come to you, Jesus, because of how we're feeling. So God, I pray right now that as these people cried out to you in their distress, God, that you would reach down from the throne room of heaven and that you would instill grace, mercy, confidence right now in Jesus' name. That God, you would remind them of the promises that you've spoken, the visions that you gave them, God and that you would renew, God, your commitment to them, that you would remind them that it's you that completes the work, that it's you that promises to finish what you've started in their lives. So God, right now I ask that you would wash away any weariness, that you would wash away doubt, and that instead you would replace it with the confidence that comes only from you in Jesus name all right church but what I want to do is I want to pray for all of us because I truly do believe that God is preparing us for something as I look around the room and I, I listen to your stories and your testimonies of what God is doing he's doing something so good in you he's doing something so good and I believe that as he does something in you something begins to happen through you and it doesn't have to take a ton of time. It can happen in one moment. That God could minister to you, do a work in you, and then you're, you're moving. I love what Pastor Doug said last week, that in the supernatural, you get to skip steps. And see, I had a moment just a few weeks ago where I came to Jesus, and as the Holy Spirit began to minister to me, I got to skip steps. And I want to believe that for our church today, that as we encounter the Holy Spirit and he ministers to you in a personal way, that something happens in you so deeply that you cannot contain what happens through you because of it. I'm serious, as I look around this room and I, I come to you with this message saying God's doing a good work in you, it's because he started one and he's gonna complete it. The promises that he gave you are real. And he, he oh, we will see it come to pass, church. How many of you are gonna believe that you're gonna see the work in your life, your friends' lives, and this, the life of this church come to pass? Whatever that means, you know what I believe? I ask God, I'm like, when you say, God, when we're praying for revival, when we see that song and say, I see a wave of revival, what does that mean, God? What does that mean? It means salvations. It means breakthroughs. It means miracles. It means a restoration, the ministry of reconciliation of his kids back to the family. Come on. And so I know I've been saying I want to pray for you, and I will. But can I just have you stretch your hands out right now? I'm just gonna pray for our entire church, the entire Pearl Church family, those of you that are here in the building, that are watching online, or that will re-watch this at some point. God, right now, God, I pray, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would minister, would speak, would give us revelation, God, of who you are. 
God, I pray for a confidence to arise in your people that regardless of circumstances and how we feel, our faith will triumph over our feelings. That God, when we become discouraged because we don't see things coming to pass, God, I pray right now for confidence to arise in us that as we begin to declare, God, you will complete this work. God, you will carry this work. And so Jesus, I ask right now that you would empower us. Your word says that you work in us. for this entire church, that the mark and the testimony, one of them, God, would be that we live in responsive obedience to what you are calling us to do. So God, right now in this place, God, we surrender our agenda, we surrender what we're thinking that you need to do in our lives, God, and we hand it over to you this morning. God, asking that you would move in us, God, move through us regardless of the cost. So Jesus, I just pray right now, God, that you would minister, that you would empower, and that you would release your church this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. this morning so good so good there were so many seeds planted this morning don't be surprised when something comes to fruition this week you're like oh my gosh lord you're doing something you're doing something great word pastor tasha you guys can hear that online on our facebook or youtube page if you want to rewatch it why don't you take a seat for just a moment we got a couple of things before we close out the service oh man so good so good. Well, we're gonna move into our time of tithes and offerings, our giving moment. Uh, we have a couple of different ways you can give. We wanna make this as easy and as convenient as possible. You can go on the website, thepearl.church slash giving. Uh, you can text the word give to 720-704-0027. That's the easiest and most secure way. We love this new feature. That you can just text the word give to that number. You can do it now, you can do it throughout the week. Uh, it's, it's always available um, because it might just spring on you. Oh yeah, I wanna give today. It might be Tuesday morning or Thursday night and you might remember to do that, but wanna let you know. Here's our principle this morning in our scripture from Proverbs. Uh, it comes from 1124. It says, one gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Generosity leads to prosperity, not, not lack. We, we function in the kingdom of God that has principles that are counterintuitive to the world that we live in. The world would say if you continue to give away everything, you would suffer want. But the Bible says when you're generous, that you don't lack, that when you give, you receive. The one that holds and withholds themselves actually suffers lack. The Bible says in another scripture, it says that they live with purses with holes in the bottom. Stuff falls out when you live selfishly and only for yourself. But when you live generous, God will continue to bless you. It's an amazing principle. I'm sure there's people sitting to the left and right of you who have lived this testimony, who have lived this principle because God is true on his word. And I love this, it's one of my favorite scriptures. I'm a living testimony in this scripture. I, I, I've seen God show up in so many ways. So I encourage you this morning, if you've never given or you've never trusted God in this area, that you're not gonna lack when you give to God. He's gonna open up something over your life. 
And so let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you for your principles. I thank you that your promises are true. God, I pray for all of us here this morning that as we sow into your work and your house, God, that we would see your hand move upon our lives. I pray for jobs, I pray for houses, I pray for careers, I pray for transitions, promotions. God, I pray that you are doing something. As Pastor Tasha said, you are up to something in all of our lives. And I just pray your grace upon us. I pray your grace upon this house. God, that we would see the goodness of God rest upon this house so we can be generous, we can reach more people, we can present the gospel to our city who desperately needs it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, well, just a couple of quick things before we transition and, and dismiss this morning. Uh, young adults on July 16th, we've got our next flow night. That'll be at 7.30 here in the building. And then you guys can get tickets for the Pat Barrett Show if you'd like to do that. But why don't we all do this? Let's give it up for Jesus one more time. We love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play. Oh. Everybody!